Welcome back to the Ticket Setup Series. In today's session, we're going to continue the process of adding a dynamic approval to our new hire automation lifecycle. Uh, but in order to add that dynamic approval, we're going to leverage Power Automate to do that. So what we'll do now is we'll move over to Power Automate. Um, and to get to Power Automate, you'll just go to make.powerautomate.com. Now there is a whole uh, section in the setup series uh, that talks about how to set up Power Automate and get it ready for ticket integration, how to set up accounts and things of that nature. You'll wanna follow that step-by-step -step to get you ready to create these types of flows. But once ready, you're able to now create a flow to, in this particular example, dynamically add an approval to that life cycle based upon the employee's manager. So what we'll do here is we'll create a new flow, um, a new automated cloud flow. And just for visual consistency, we'll name this Ticket Setup Series, uh, New Hire Automation, Task and Approval Evaluation. Now I'm gonna use this flow for other automation examples. I'm actually gonna use it to dynamically ship the lifecycle and add tasks to that new hire process. So that's why I'm naming it the way I'm naming it. Um, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to look for the ticket triggers of when a ticket is created. And we're going to create that. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure that this trigger is pointing to my correct environment. I have a few environments. Uh, this one is another environment for me, uh, but I want to point it to my setup series um, environment, which is this particular account. Now that I've done that, um, I can now specify the parameters I want to look for when a new ticket is created. There's all sorts of parameters I can pivot off of. The one that I care about in this particular example is my new hire automation service request. So now this trigger is listening for whenever a new hire automation service request is created. Another little thing that I'm gonna call out here is you can rename these triggers and actions and uh, almost give a visual documentation of what's happening in a flow when you actually look at the workflow. So for this example, um, I might say when a new hire automation service request is created. Okay, so now that I have that trigger defined, um, I will go ahead and grab the uh, requester's manager that's submitting this new hire. I'm actually going to leverage a Microsoft Power Automate action um, and search for the word manager here. There's a whole slew of Power Automate uh, library options that are provided to you by Microsoft. One of them is Office 365 users. And in there, there's a get manager action. And what we're doing here is we're getting the manager for the requester of the um, new hire. Now, just like before, um, I'm gonna rename this. So get requesters, requesters manager. And then this one is actually asking me for a specific data property to get the employee to get the employee's manager. Um, it's UPN. Uh, for us, what we'll do here is we'll add a dynamic property. Um, and you'll see here, we get all of the properties that that particular trigger when a ticket is created gives us. We only need request your email. That's what we need to be able to get the employee's ma manager out of Microsoft Entra. So once I have the employee's manager, uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, add an approval to the approval phase of that new hire automation lifecycle. So to do that, I'm gonna add another action here and I'm gonna go search for ticket and I'm gonna use a ticket action to add that approval here. I have a slew of actions here that we'll kind of work through as we're working on some of these automations. But this particular one, I'm, I'm gonna add the approval here. Now, once I've selected add approval, um, the first thing it's asking me is which ticket do you wanna add the approval for? I wanna add the ticket for this trigger up here. So what we'll do is we'll select a dynamic property and we will have to specify ticket ID. Now I can go scroll and find that, or I can also just go search for that and grab that. Um, then I'm gonna start filling out the, the approval itself. So the title of the approval, um, new hire approval, it's fine. Actually, let's do approve new hire. If someone's gonna get this, it's kind of a verb to go do it. Uh, and then for advanced prop parameters here, I get some options here. 
the first option, which is an important element, element of this is specifying where you want this approval added. If I didn't choose anything, I would just add an approval to this ticket. Um, but I would like to add the approval to uh, the new hire automation, the phase approve new hire. Um, and that's gonna add this approval to that phase from the life cycle we created um, in the previous section of this video. I'll come back to how to specify approvers in a moment. Uh, for additional details, um, please approve the new hire. I could also toggle whether I want everyone to approve this or no one to approve this. I'm gonna leave that default off, um, but you have the option to do that here. Now, if I go back to approvers, a couple of things here. One, I can't specify manual email addresses, so one or many here. So if I wanted to specify someone's email address, I could. Um, but that's not what we're trying to do here. We're trying to dynamically interpret the requester's manager and then add that approval. So what we're gonna do here actually is we're going to use a dynamic property here um, and we're going to leverage the properties of the get requesters manager action. Um, and when I go to see more here, the one that I need for this particular example is the UPN user principal name. That's gonna give me the email address for the requesters manager and that's a ticket's way of looking up uh, who the approver should be and then making the approver that person. Um, so we're gonna select that there uh, and then we're done. So just to kind of recap, uh, we're looking for when a ticket is created specifically for the new hire automation. We're then getting the requester's manager um, and then we're going to add an approval to the life cycle new hire automation to the phase approve new hire. And we're gonna use the office action to get the requester's manager and make that person the approver. I'll go ahead and save this out. And this is where we'll pause this particular video. In the next section, we'll actually initiate this new hire process uh, and walk through how this actually works um, with dynamically adding this uh, approval. Hope you enjoyed this section and looking forward to seeing you uh, on the next one. Thanks.